Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Welcome to Shiloh, the place of breakthrough. This is where breakthroughs are made. And we can test that we have seen the Lord in those two years. Bwana asifiwe. My name is Beatrice Waitaka and I'm born again this afternoon. This morning, I am born again and I love the Lord as my personal savior. I am member, a member of this church and I serve here. This month of October, we've been tackling the theme of Thanksgiving. It has been a Thanksgiving month and I believe you've been blessed and you have seen where you're supposed to give thanks. And this morning, by the grace of God, I want us to go through gratitude in suffering. And I know that is not a good topic, but bear with me because we have to have it. Yes, life is, life is made up of ups and downs. Therefore, this morning we want to look at gratitude in suffering. And our key verse is from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18. And Paul said, give thanks in all circumstances, in all, not in some, but in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. He knew there will be circumstances that will not be good. You open your mouth and say, surely, can I say thank you? Even because of what I am going through. Such a morning, can I say thank you? Bible says, give thanks. It doesn't say you complain or you mama or you ask God questions, God does not answer questions, but God answers prayers. And he says, give thanks in all circumstances, because this is God's will. It's not the will of your parents. It's not the will of your boss. It's not the will of your neighbor. It is God's will for you. Not for us. It is personal. It's for you. In Christ Jesus. Even if you can read up to that and go home, we've been ministered. But what is the will of God for me to give thanks? When you give thanks, things happen. When you give thanks, miracles take place. When you give thanks, you are fulfilled. When you give thanks, the Lord makes a way. Gratitude and suffering are two most fundamental aspects of human experience. Gratitude. It doesn't say that suffering, then gratitude. It said gratitude and then suffering. When you give thanks because of what you are going through, the Lord will make a way. But you know, friends, just like the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, they didn't see where they were. They only saw what was happening at the present. But the Lord is saying this morning, give thanks to me because I hold your tomorrow. You are telling the Lord, I've been suffering all through as far as you can remember. But the Lord is saying, the more, the more you suffer, the more you draw closer to me. The more you suffer, the more I'm molding you. The more you suffer, the more I am feeling you. When I saw Sifiwe, you normally say that visions, visions leak, but it's up to you to keep on doing what? Adding into the visions until they come to fulfillment. While they may seem to be polar opposite, they are deeply intertwined. This is gratitude and suffering. You give thanks because of what you are seeing. It might not be good, but the Lord demands a thanksgiving. Remember this, friends, that this body, how it has been wired, is a body that always wants. It's about me, I, and myself. Give me, give me, give me. And somebody said this, that a man was drowning, and in the river, uh, just before he drowned Yakabisa, somebody said, Give me, let me lift you up. And this man refused because he thought when you lift him up, somebody's go, something's going to, to come out of him. So what the, what, this man got a revelation. Somebody told him, tell him take. Because you tell him give, give me your hand, I pull you. He thought, giving, I give. Some, he was told to, to tell him to do what? To take. Then he said, take my hand. And this man brought his hand up and he was saved. We all want to take, but not to give. But the secret of giving is doing what? It's giving. The secret of receiving is giving. The Lord is saying this morning, you've been praying that same prayer for 40 years. If you're 40, over 40 like me here. You've been praying that, that prayer for 30 years. You've been praying that prayer for 25 years. But the Lord is saying this morning, give me thanks. Thank me. 
and then I'm going to open the door. You are standing at the door, holding that key, and he's saying, the key that is written, thank you. Use that, but thank you. Thank you for what? Then you put the key in your pocket. He's saying this morning, give me thanks. Thank me because of the sufferings. Your sufferings are not my sufferings. But every one of us here, as I said, suffering is part and parcel of this life. The Lord is saying, is it your health? I'm able to heal you. I said in the first service, you know the first service is better than this one. We have only one, one, one sickness. But you know the beauty with this one, that is the diversity of this, of these services. And I told the first service, you're always on your knees asking God, now I am 30. Now I'm 35. And now I'm 40. I'm not even married. And I told them, don't look for men. Look for a man. This man is Jesus. When you get Jesus, when you, you are grateful about your life, you tell Jesus, yes, I love you, but I need an earthly man. But you, don't, you have no gratitude. You only look on what you don't have. You don't look at what you have. The children of Israel forgot what, where they came from. When they saw the, the, the Red Sea, they saw mountains on this and this side, they said, better we could have died in Egypt. I hope that is not your prayer. That I've waited for you for 30 years. You have not given me a husband. I've been married for the last 15 years. You have not given children. The Lord is saying, and I asked the first service, and I'm going to ask you this question. In your Bible, is it written that the gateway to heaven, you must produce a marriage certificate? Is it written that nobody go to heaven without a husband? If you don't have a husband, this way. If you have a husband, this way. We are looking for the things that are not worthy in this journey. But the Lord is saying this morning, just be grateful that I woke you this morning. When you wake up in this morning, what do you do the first thing? You took your phone and see, kama kuna message ya mpesa. But the Lord is saying this morning, when you open your eyes, say, hallelujah, it is a new day. Thank you, Jesus. I am not in prison. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not in hospital bed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not confined in my home bed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not in police cell. Friends, the Lord is saying, your blessing are on the other side of your gratitude. For how long will you tamak here? For how long will you caution the Lord? The Lord is not of our age. See what kayako? That when you open your mouth, you come maswadi hivi. Why are you there in that committee when he planned to, to create you? Why are you there? But you have the guts to have the Lord kweni mimi, udini sahau. Wali o sahaurika wakomochari. Where would you Because the enemy has told you, you uja to, I told the first service, wana kwambia. Ujatosha unga. Eh? Ujatosha. Ujatosha. Eh? Ujatosha. Ujatosha unga. Then let me tell you, Sasa, baby, just look at yourself from your head. Angalia kichwa wako vile inaka. He does the analysis from your head to your toe. And then you enter into his camp. Did he create you? The Lord is saying this morning, I need your gratitude so that I can remove you from what you are going through. Wanasifiwe. Believers are to give thanks in every circumstance of life. In sickness, when you're in that bed, just about to be pronounced dead, no, be transferred to the other side. Just tell the Lord, behold, I am coming home. In health, in poverty, and in wealth. Wherever you find yourself this morning, is it in wealth? Is it in health? Give thanks. Because all that the Lord needs from you, nothing, just a thanksgiving. That the Lord, I'm forever grateful. Because you've created me, not in the image of my parents. There's nothing like that. You cannot be your father. You cannot be your mother. You are created in the image and likeness of who? In the beginning, I want to create this man in the image of their parents. But he created you in his image. So any other response from the enemy, you say, that is not my portion. Gratitude is an affirmation of the good and a recognition of where that good is sourced. Where is that good sourced? From heaven. Friends, where we are going is better than where we are coming from. 
embrace yourself, tell yourself, me, I am going because I know there is a place that will be destined for me. I'm not of this world. But when you listen to the enemy, it says, you, you are good for nothing. Who said you're good for nothing? God cannot create anything good for nothing. He created you. Yes, you will suffer. Suffering, it's part and parcel. I told the first service that suffering is the energy. It's like energy. You cannot live in this world without energy. Therefore, you'll come out of this storm, enter into one, or get ready to enter into another one. That is life. Because this world is not our home. You can never be contented. Even Jesus Christ, the son of God, he left the throne, came on this earth, but he never saw anything good until he went back to heaven. We are shifting camps from today. Suffering, on the other hand, refers to the experience of pain, hardship, and adversity. Nobody laughs in, in, in suffering. You can have never found anybody laughing. If you want to see a good, a good example, go to the morgues. Go to the morgues Monday through to Monday and tell them if you found anybody laughing in that place. You can know, only know the language in the morgue. What is the language? Money and screaming. That is the language. And our language as believers, it is suffering and giving the Lord gratitude. But I want to thank you that this far it has taken you. But complaints, the enemy came with a remedy of complaining. My prayer is you have everything to thank God. Suffering is inevitable. You cannot. And it, it, it is inevitable. Suffering. So long as you're in this flesh, you cannot. If suffering is inevitable and unavoidable part of the human condition. If you are a human being, suffering and uh, suffering is inevitable and unavoidable. Therefore, if you are suffering this morning, you are in the right track. Yes, you're in the right track. Do you have somebody who is suffering today? Yes, you're in the right. You have not lost your mind. You have not lost your way. You are in the right place because suffering is part and parcel of this life. And don't ask questions. Why me? If not you, it is you. Because the Lord is saying, because I'm making something out of you. And I know you're going to overcome this. And you, after you overcome this, another one. I was preparing this message. I remembered when you were in primary school. And there's something that you, you used to call high, ni high jump. Gerwa. Naitwa nini? High jump. High jump. Ukiruka, sika natosha hivi. Ukiruka, inafanya, unambi umekua hivi na? Good. Inapandishua. Alafu tena, unaruka. Unafanya nini? That is how life is. Until ufike ili aju, uruke three times, uangushe, unasema, amefika mwisho. Nawe utafika mwisho, utakapo fungulua mlango ya binguni. You keep on jumping. Ina, una jump hii, six months are over. Onambi, oh, ongeza ingine. But my prayer is, you know where you are jumping. You don't want to jump, you do what? You know where you are jumping. Bwana sifiwe. Yes. Although gratitude is generally associated with receiving a good, it is not just a switch. Eh, switch EV. They, they will switch el electricity in the house to run to when life is going well. There's no, way to, there's no socket. There's no switch. You only keep the lane. You run your race and keep your lane. Because when you miss your lane, even if you come number one, you'll be disqualified. Run your race and keep your lane. One has a few. Gratitude is also a light that shines in the darkness. Like here we are. We don't need the light. Are we together? Because there is no darkness. But enter into a room where there is total darkness. You need a, a light. That is how great it is. When you know how to thank God and giving gratitude, you are switching light into your dark areas in your life. And the Lord is saying, he is the light. Not here Kenya power. He is the light. It also opens new methods for seeing and for you to see, to see and to know new possibilities in life. When you become a person of gratitude, every day 
the Lord is going to, you're going to return something. When you give thanks, the moment you say thank you, the Lord opens the drawer because he knows something has touched me. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus said, somebody has touched me because I've sent power that's come out of me. Friends, when you give thanks, in that suffering, the Lord said, at least I have somebody. He opens the drawer and gives you what you want. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Talk to anyone. I didn't say sp speak. I say talk. There's a difference between speaking and talking and greeting. If I want to speak to you, I give attention. I listen to you. And the writer says, when you take long listening to me, you will hear the ring of suffering in my life. Because if somebody asks, how are you? I'm fine. That is very superficial. But the moment you hear, the moment you give me a hearing, I tell you, you know what I'm suffering. Because every one of us is going through a time. But the message of the gospel is the message of suffering. The message of the gospel is the message of suffering. So if you are suffering and you are born again, you are a believer, you are on the right track. Because you are on track. Keep on suffering. Sufferings will come to an end when you see the heavens open. Jesus persevered until he said, it is finished. And then he gave up the ghost. Even you, you will suffer until the moment you see the heavens open. I'm reminded of Stephen in the book of Acts. When this man was stoned, remember he was not a sinner. When he was stoned, the Bible says that Stephen bowed down. What did he see? He saw Jesus sitting on the right hand. People kept on uh, mob justice. Yeah. People kept on stoning him. But Stephen never spoke a word. He only opened, he closed his eyes and he saw Jesus sitting on the right side. Friends, it's not time for you to that hey, and defending yourself. It is the right time of giving God thank you. Thank you for what I'm going through. Thank you for, for, for what I will go through because things will come. It's not about now. It's about yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Things will be tough. But my prayer for you as I pray for myself is that we put on those strong shock absorbers because we know where we are going until we say it is finished and the heavens will open. We are commanded, not requested, to be thankful. It is not a request. It is a command. Because when you say thank you, the next part, Jesus takes over. Your part is just to be thankful, and then the Lord will take over the rest. And you're asking, why me? Why me? For how long will I pray for this marriage? For how long will I pray for the salvation of my husband? For how long will I pray for my children? It is as long as the Lord says, it is finished. So keep on tarrying on your knees. Every word from the mouth of a king becomes a law. If the king said you give thanks, that is a law. Keep on giving thanks. Because out of the thanksgiving, that is where your miracle lies. Out of the thanksgiving, that is where your breakthrough lies. Out of that thanksgiving, that's where the salvation of your loved ones, the salvation of your children, the salvation of your husband, your wealth and your health is in the thanksgiving. But when you keep quiet, friends, the Lord keeps quiet. You still walk with him, but nothing will happen. You've been in salvation for 50 years, for 40 years, but there's no difference with a person who got born again yesterday because you have no gratitude in your mouth. Even knowing Jesus Christ, whom to is alive at home, just tell him, thank you because I was the least that anybody could have thought that he could enter the kingdom. But because of your masses, I am here. Just alone. Recognize his power. Recognize his masses. Recognize his grace. And he's saying, the rest belongs to him. We all go through difficult times. But how often do we say thank you during these times? Are you on the complaining or in the gratitude? The Lord, thank you that my loved one has been diagnosed with the cancer. But I know cancer is not the end. The end it is you. 
you, you're telling the doctor. But for us, we, we believe on the report of the doctor. They believe in the report of the Lord. You tell the Lord, thank you. Yes, my relative is going through this, going through dialysis. But I know the doctor did not create anybody, but you created my, my relative. You're able to create new kidneys for my relative. The Lord is asking, what is too hard for me? Buana Yesu asifiwe. Suffering is part and parcel of life. Allow me to bring this analogy. We all know about salt. You know salt? Yes, yeah, salt. Salt. Food without salt, it is tasteless. As the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Sendio, have you found somebody who has gone to the, to the, to the restaurant and asked a plate of salt? What can I serve you? Niete sani achumbi. That's the way the Lord wants us to, 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 to take him and to live for him. That in this life, though there is salt, there is, the salt comes to give this food taste. So it doesn't matter what we'll go through. The Lord is saying, just give me thanks because I know how to remove this and put this because I have good plans for you. Suffering is having what you don't want. And this is pain. Nobody loves pain. And nobody loves when you're in pain. It doesn't matter how minute it is. It doesn't matter if it is your head or your nail. Nobody loves pain. And wanting what you don't have. That is suffering. Buana asifiwe. Everyone is suffering in some way. Even you. Therefore, you might find it hard to be thankful today. But it is possible for your suffering to be an occasion for gratitude and thanksgiving. Suffering comes to you like a gift. A gift wrapped with grace. The Lord knew this one cannot deny me. A good example is Job. Job did not see what he lost, but he saw how he came to this world. That naked I came into this world, and naked I will leave this world. But we are holding so, so much on what we have. But the Lord is saying this morning, release everything. Give me thanks. Because that wife, the wife of Lord or of Job, did not belong to Job. She was as a companion for some time. And that's why she, he told Job, why would you hold on to this God? Curse him and die. Believe us, we don't die. We only sleep. And we only sleep if you are in good connection with this master who went to prepare a place. And in return, God returned everything. The beautiful daughters and the handsome men because he has everything. Job touched the heart of God. He just praised the Lord. What about you? Those small, small things you have gone through in your mouth this morning. And my mouth is full of murmuring and complaining. For how long? The Lord is saying, as long as I live. It's not your timing. It is his timing. And he says, the book of Ecclesiastes that in my timing I make everything beautiful. So even now, stay the process. We don't want the process, friends. We only want something instant. But the Lord is saying, stay on the course and stay on the process because I am coming to give you the byproduct and the end product shall be better than the way it began. Buana sifiwe. Suffering can be an occasion for gratitude without, suffering cannot be an occasion of gratitude without the eyes of faith. For you to persevere, you must have faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen. Whatever you see, it is not faith. Not but things hoped for. I'm hoping for a better tomorrow. I am hoping for a better job. I am hoping for a better marriage. I'm not leaving my husband, but I stick to this husband because I know that our end shall be better. I want to thank you, God, because I am not a single mother. Though I, I live with this man, I'm not a single mother. When married people are called, I shall be in the line because I'm not a single mother. I'll be together. Keep God gratitude for what you have. Suffering can be an occasion of gratitude, as I said. This may 
this may seem impossible, giving God thanks because of what you are seeing with your eyes, but see with the eyes of faith. But looking through God's eyes of eternity, it is not possible, but it is logical. When you see the many trials Christians have to endure, it makes you wonder, why should Russia's people have to suffer? Because this is not their home. They are only passing. You don't take a matter two from Roy Sambu and say, Apo chini kuna muto imeflar, kwa hivyo ntarara zima man. Utara kwa nani zima man? You must press on until you figure 44 kwenye unaishi. Our Lord Jesus was not a coward. You are coming after who? He was not a coward. He faced the cross. And today he's sitting on the, sitting on the right side of his father because he faced and endured the, the, the pain on the cross. Bible says that he's so beyond the cross. He's so beyond the pain. Do not relent. Press on because where we are going is better than where we are coming from. Buana Sifiwe. Believers believe in Christ. They serve him and want to be with him. But lo and behold, look at what they are going through because we have an enemy. And this body is going nowhere. This body has arrived where it was going. Therefore, there is a fight between the spirit and your body. And who is going to win? Your spirit. God could eliminate all their sufferings if he chooses to, but he does not. He's able to eliminate all that you are going through. But he doesn't. He said, I am still watching because I know you cannot let me down. I know the faith you have in me, you cannot let me down. So the Lord is waiting and tell, telling his heart, this one will overcome. Allow me to bring three or four points and then I call it a wrap. Suffering motivates us. Suffering motivates us. Pain and suffering are very effective motivating forces. Pain and suffering. Suffering also moves us to prioritize our lives because during times of trouble, we should see more clearly what is important and what is not. When we in that suffering, I don't know where you are this morning, when you, that you, can, you, you prioritize life and you say, there was a time I could be able to pay my rent. Those memories now flash in your mind. Now the agent is here. He's threatening to look close this door tomorrow, this, this house tomorrow. The Lord gives you time to prioritize where you have come from. And he's saying, even now, I'm going to through with you. Because this house to be closed is not the end of you. Before the house, you are. So keep on trusting me. For example, if it were not for suffering, Job would not have found the answers to the questions that his suffering made him ask of God. Out of the suffering, Job had questions. In the, Job had answers, sorry. Had answers. He didn't ask questions. He had answers. And the Lord knew, this is a man that I can trust. Ticates, he doesn't have a wife. That is a wife. He doesn't have children and possessions. He still cling on to me because he knew that it is me and him, not me and the others. It is suffering that motivates most people to search for God, search for his will, and search for his presence in their lives. When you are not suffering, friends, you cannot tell where people go to seek for God. People go to seek for God in many places. Like now we are going to heaven's gate tomorrow. All the ladies, I say all the ladies by faith. We we'll be leaving church tomorrow morning. When people are celebrating and enjoying themselves, for us we knew one thing. We want to be grateful. We are going to heaven's gate. Heaven's gate is not a hotel or a restaurant for your information. It is a mountain. There are no sufrias there. There are no places there. But we purpose we go and just say thank you. So it will make you to be different from other people. When people are eating, you are fasting. When people are crying, you are laughing. When people are laughing, you are crying because we are not on the same page. Without suffering, we tend to stay in one dimension and not think too deeply about things 
Sufferings are good. They make us, to, they make us to know that we can go deeper and deeper. Psalm says that deeper calls for the, the deep calls for the deep. When you are suffering, you know, hey, if I can put this plate aside, I know I can seek the Lord. When I can put the blanket aside, I know I can seek the Lord. Suffering makes us draw closer to God. Suffering forces us to look beyond ourselves for answers, for relief, and for redemption. This is the work of suffering. Number two, suffering enables us to sympathize. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, 17 and 18, for this reason, he had to be made like man. This is Jesus. Fully human in every way. You know that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God. And that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Remember, he was not a sinner. But he became an atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He's, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who have been tempted, like you and me. Buana asifiwe. Humanity finds its common denominator in the experience of suffering. Do you want to find your common denominator? We all meet in the experience of suffering. Somebody said this, that two ladies met in the forest. They were going to hang themselves. One of the ladies had no children. So she was going through a hard time from the in-laws. For how long? For how long? The other lady had children, but she had nothing to give to the children. So she decided, instead of seeing my children here die, I better end up my life and leave them to the community and the society. So she went to the, to the forest. But just before she tied the note, you know, can I give you the tip? So you're going to hang yourself, but they are not here. <laughs> yes, there is a note. You don't just take a rope. There is a note, and then you see it is going to fit your... Because you don't hang the, your, your foot, you hang your, your neck. Yes. So before she tied the note, she saw a lady. And then she, she hid herself with a tree. But this lady had already seen her. Then she came. And then they had a conversation. Why are we here? She said, me, I'm here because I have children. I cannot feed them. I decided I better die. Instead of seeing them die, let me die, leave them to the community. And you, I am here because I don't have children. I've gone through a lot with my in laws. And they said, now, instead of dying, so you come, I give you food. You go and give your children. Then you pray for me that God may give me children. And the rest is history. Number three, suffering reveals the shock of sin. Suffering this, the shock of sin. Some people blame God for their suffering and are angry at him for not stopping the suffering. They lay at his feet the blame for their sorrow as if he was the cause of their pain. But the Bible clearly reveals that sin is the cause of all suffering and death, not God. And every choice you make friends in this life, consequences are automatic. You choose to live for God Consequences are automatic. You choose to live for the other neighbors. I don't want to mention him. You know the neighbor, the other neighbor. Consequences are automatic. Romans 6.23 says, Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not in our church, not in our religion, not in our belief, but in who? In Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you have any problem trusting in Jesus, eternity and you are opposite ways. It all began with Adam and Eve who disobeyed God, resulting in the fall of human race. And as the sinfulness of man multiplied the fall of the creation as well. It is not us who sinned. It is where we are coming from. We are carrying those sins. But we want to thank God because of his mercies and his grace upon us. And Jesus came to unite us again into our creator. And we can only do this by confessing our sins. Don't say you are not a sinner. You are confessing the sins of Adam and Eve. Even you are born today, you are a sinner. The only people who give birth 
to Christians are Muslims because Muslims give birth to Muslims. But as we give birth to pagans, and along the way, they come to know Jesus as their personal savior. Therefore, when you stand in your family, don't say, Sisi to meokoka. Say, Ma wewe umeokoka. Wewe umeokoka. Salvation is not an umbrella. That you open an umbrella, you cover four people. It is not an umbrella. It is you. And the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. Number four. Suffering draws us closer to God. Some people, they're not in this service. They blame God for their pain. Others draw closer to him. When you are in pain, which side are you? Do you blame God or you draw closer to him? The apostle Paul, who was already quite knowledgeable concerning God's word and his will, drew, drew nearer to God when he suffered. Not when he studied, but when he suffered. It was his pleading with God to remove his thorn in the flesh and led him to hear the Lord say, my grace is sufficient. I don't know the thorn you have in your flesh today. You've been praying for this thorn. But the moment the Lord touches Evie, you remember. But the Lord is saying, I will not remove the thorn. My grace will be sufficient. Therefore, you live with that thorn until you leave this earth. Because you're not living on your own. You're living by who? By the grace of God. Buana sifiwe. Suffering in all of its forms moves us back to where we should be. You go out of the, out, out, out of the fence. You don't maintain boundaries. When you are coming back, sufferings will be leading you. Because you went and thought the other side, the, green is, the grass is greener on the other side. And then you went. When you are coming back, you come back with this curse. When I see fear. The greatest waste is when someone suffers, but their suffering leaves them as self-dependent and proud as ever. That you didn't learn anything out of that suffering. That is the greatest waste. The greatest benefit of suffering one can receive is not getting their health back or their freedom or their happiness back. Then greatest benefit is a new dependence on God each day whether suffering stays on or goes. You remain on the winning side. What is the key to good attitude in the midst of suffering as I wind up? Number one, key number one, Deposit yourself in God. How many have an account here? You know what, what I mean by depositing? Yes, deposit yourself in God. Though we may not be called to die as Stephen did, we are called to deposit our lives as he did. This man deposited his life in Jesus. Whatever he went through, he did not commend because he knew one thing. I am not of my own. I'm God's property. And the Lord came through for him. Number two, our se we, our, we deposit ourselves. Number one is you deposit yourself in God. Number two, put yourself in the bank of God. How many know that God has a bank? Put yourself in God's bank. And finally, it is better to be in the wilderness than in captivity. Because in the wilderness, God will provide. But in captivity... He will not provide. In the wilderness is when you are suffering and God will provide a way for you. But in captivity, he cannot provide. God provided in the wilderness, but not in captivity. Buana Yesu asifiwe. Allow me to share this and then I call it a day. There's some, a, a, a Bible commentator by the name of Matthew Henry. And he said this. He reflected on an incident that he went through. He said this, that when he was going in his duty errands, he was robbed. The title is, I am thankful I was robbed. Can you say that? That you are thankful? Can that come out of your mouth? No. Oh, thank you. He said this, a man stole his wallet. 
This is Matthew Henry. And as he reflected on the incident, Henry said this, let me be thankful. Why? Number one, because he never robbed me before. He robbed me now or today. Number two, because although he took my past, he did not, to, he did not, not take away my life. Number three, because although he took all I possess, it was not much. And finally, he said, because it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. You see the difference? Henry's attitude is the one we need. I am reminded that in the words of the old spiritual, in the old spiritual song, we see that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. All things here can be stolen. Your wife can be stolen. Your husband can be stolen. Your children can be stolen. Your possessions can be stolen. But I have treasure hidden out of sight where thieves do not break in and steal. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Loving Father in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for the promises you have upon our lives. We know we are frail. We know you are weak. But dear Father, your purpose to help us. You gave us a word this year that you are going to help us. We were at a session because you know our help is on the way. Just before we're in the verge of collapsing to your Lord, come and lift us. Come and help us. We need to reach heaven because this is a journey that we began. Help none of us, Jehovah Father, to get lost in this wilderness, to get lost in this life. But help us to focus, Jehovah Father, focus unto you. We know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but to deliver them from all. Whatever they are going through now, Abba Father, we know that you are coming to see them through. You are coming to rescue them so that you can harvest glory for yourself. When every eye is closed and every head bowed, are you here? You are not born again. This is not your portion. When the Lord is walking with children through the sufferings, he cannot walk with you. He cannot defend you. He cannot partner with you unless he sees the mark of the blood of his son upon you. Are you here? You are not born again. You'd love to give Jesus this life because this life belongs to him. Just raise your hand. I'll sit and pray with you and for you. Are you here? It doesn't matter how, how long you have lived. It doesn't matter how good you are before people. But the Lord is saying this morning, I don't know you. The only thing that can make you to know you is the blood of, the, of my son upon you. Are you here? You have heard the word. And the Lord is saying, just open your heart. I get him. That I can dine with you now and forever. That I can fight the battles with you. In your sufferings, I'll be with you. I can walk side by side with you because of the mark of the blood of my son upon you. Are you here? Father, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you for your word. We know to your father and we are rest assured that our lives will never be the same again because you have reminded us that you are walking in us. You have reminded us that suffering is part and parcel of this life. That suffering is the energy and we cannot do without energy, we cannot do without oxygen in this life. Help us to know that you are there with us. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.